I'm not going anywhere until I get some apple pie. Welcome to the channel folks, I'm Al, this is the Geek In Review, so let's talk about Loki Season 2, Episode 2, Breaking Brad. So if last week was a catch up to Season 1, then this week is literally the first episode for the story for the rest of the season. We learn about what Sylvie's been up to, how the time loom can be repaired, and General Dox's plan from when she and X5 disappeared at the end of Episode 1. So, old school Loki villainy in this episode along with a lot of McDonald's but I'll get to both of those in a minute. But first, thanks for taking the time to choose to watch this channel, I really appreciate it and if you haven't done it already, please subscribe and if you make it all the way to the end, leave a like on the video as well. The episode opens with a bit of a time jump. A time jump? Do you get it? I mean it doesn't pick up where episode 1 left off if you didn't, but that doesn't matter. General Docs and Hunter X5 have gone missing, so Loki and Mobius go to swing in London to find out what's going on and find X5 who's now a movie star. He's not really Steve McQueen but he's enjoying himself as this guy Brad Wolf. They chase him down and yeah straight away you notice that something's a little bit different about Loki or I should say a little bit familiar. Especially the way that he goes after X5 is very villainous. So glad we're here. He manages to escape for a little bit, but Loki uses a few of his tricks to stop him. And yeah, I'm getting a vibe of really Thor 2 Loki or Avengers Loki here, the way that he's behaving. It's not a fair fight. And this continues throughout the rest of the episode. And they take him back to the TVA where they're trying to find out what he's been up to and what's going on with his temp pad because he's modified it but they don't know exactly how. So they take it to OB to find out. And since we've last seen him, OB's been busy trying to repair the time loom to process the new branches. And OB tells him to check the TVA guide which was mentioned last week as well and Mobius and Loki try to work out exactly what's happened to the temp pad. Loki warns Mobius about what's coming in the conversation between Renslayer and Kang that he heard last week in the past. Thank you for being on my team. Casey tries helping them out and also refers to the TV guidebook, so I wonder what does this mean because they've been bringing it up quite a lot in this show and it's only the first two episodes. And what exactly is in this book? They interview Brad, aka X5, and he points out whatever Loki does always makes things worse. See, everything you and Sylvie have ever done to try to help has only ever made it worse. Is that right? And it's not just this Loki, it's every Loki. So I wonder if Loki is going to be similar to the Molecule Man in the multiverse when it comes to Secret Wars. And what that means is if you haven't read the comics, and I wouldn't expect you to, is there's a character in Marvel Comics called Warren who's, well, the Molecule Man, and no matter which reality or multiverse that you're in, there's always a version of this guy, and it's pretty much always the same guy as well who has the same powers. So a Nexus being is essentially a being that exists in every multiverse, and some people are thinking it's Loki, some people are thinking it might be the Scarlet Witch, given the fact that she jumped between dimensions in the Multiverse of Madness, but if you're asking me, if they are going to use the phrase Nexus being, it's probably going to apply to Loki at some point rather than anyone else. And X5 tries to provoke Loki and he sort of does, and I keep saying it, but this is old school Loki here, so I wonder if he has really cleaned up his act or he is going to be a villain in the end. But anyway... X5 reminds Mobius that he doesn't actually know who he really is and it all gets a bit Matrix with people questioning the reality in their own existence. Loki and Mobius sit down to eat to discuss their next move, exactly like they used to do in Season 1, and they talk about how emotions can get the better of them, so I wonder if this is foreshadowing. Do you remember that time I was so angry with my father and my brother, I went down to Earth and I held the whole of New York City hostage with an alien army. And Loki asks Mobius if he's not curious about who he was or who he really is. And Mobius has got a pretty good point here where he says, 
He's happy working for the TVA with his life at the moment. Doesn't really want to find out in case his real life is actually better than his current one, so he's not really missing anything by not knowing or not rocking the boat. But back to have another crack at X5 and Loki tricks Mobius into leaving the room. And initially I thought, is this going to be a good cop, bad cop thing? Because that's kind of how Hiddleston and Wilson play it off each other. And it's hard to tell with Loki and Mobius in this episode. They think that X5 found Sylvie and didn't turn her in so that he could go and live the movie star lifestyle in another timeline. And Loki really wants to get to the bottom of this and yeah, it's not good cop, bad cop, it's just good Mobius, bad Loki. And Loki starts to torture X5 using a TVA device and I have to say, the effects are pretty good and I keep saying it but it's very old school Loki here. Just tell me where Sylvie is. While this is all going on, OB tries to repair the time loom and finds out that only a specific temporal aura can access it. And I did mention this in my spoiler video for season 2 that the reason that they can't go and change it is because only he who remains is able to access it. So they need he who remains, or I should say a Kang variant, in this case Victor Timely, in order to access the loom and repair it. So that's why they're going to end up going back in time in the next few episodes to locate Victor and bring him to the TVA and explain all this. We've also seen it in clips for the trailers in the rest of the season as well, where we see Victor Timely going over a sort of model of the timeline that we've seen in episode one when Mobius in the suit. So this further plays into the fact that this could all be a time loop if Victor Timely is he who remains and he just hasn't become him yet, as they're going to explain events to him that haven't happened and he's going to make happen. But basically, yeah, they need a Kang variant in order to sort this all out. Obi fills the rest of them in and it turns out that Casey is a bit of a fanboy, again mentioning the TVA guidebook. This episode is all building to Sylvie in the big McDonald's advert. They go to the branch timeline in 1982 McDonald's to sell you stuff and find Sylvie and yeah we knew that this was coming and we knew that they were going to go hard but I hope Marvel doesn't go this heavy in product placement in more movies and shows. It's always really had it since day one with Audi being a big one that's popped up in most of the movies but this is definitely the biggest time that the MCU has been so heavy handed in letting you know and it's the most Marvel has ever tried to sell you something that's not a Marvel toy put it that way. Loki catches Sylvie up with what's happened and asks why she'd be in the TVA in the future and she says she's got no idea as she's got no intention of ever going back. So yeah, is it a time loop or is it a predestination paradox? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Sylvie enchants X5 to find out what General Dox's plan is and it turns out it's to bomb every branch in the timeline simultaneously in order to bring back the sacred timeline. And we see and we watch the TVA while this is going on and it's happening with all the branches being pruned at once. With the information that they have from X5, they go and find Dox who's already wiped out 30% of the multiverse apparently and they manage to stop her and Hunter calls them back to the TVA just as they watch all the timelines collapsing and getting pruned. They also manage to locate Judge Renslayer and Sylvie leaves using He Who Remains' his temp pad that she got from the end of season 1, going back to the branch timeline of 1982 to try and sell you more delicious fast food that's terrible and will probably kill you a lot sooner than not. Oh, and also she debates her next move. Now, I really enjoyed this week's Loki, apart from the whole McDonald's stuff, obviously, and it's setting us up to meet Victor Timely, who's a Kang variant next week, who might actually be a friendly Kang variant if he isn't he who remains. But yeah, all this thing is setting up either a predestination paradox or a time loop that they're already a part of that they aren't aware of yet. It's just a matter of working out exactly what it is. But I just wonder what's going on with OB in the TVA guidebook, because they really seem to be hammering at home, and I'm not sure if it's for comedic effect or they're foreshadowing something that they're setting up later on in the season. But what do you guys think? Is there more going on with OB in the TV guidebook? Let me know in the comments below. How did you feel about all the McDonald's stuff? Because obviously I wasn't particularly that big on it. But I understand they've got to make money and cut the cost of these shows somehow. 
but I'm really enjoying Loki season two so far. I just can't wait till they actually do more time travel stuff next week with Victor Timely and we might get a few answers to exactly what's going on for the overall plot for this season and it's definitely going to set up Deadpool 3 in Secret Wars as I mentioned, maybe even in a bigger way than we already know. But as always, these are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below or you can follow me on Twitter at The Geeks Reviews and reach out to me there. As always, my name's Al. Thanks for watching.